Hello folks. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Amico Power ARC-140 stick welder. I previously did a review of an Amico welder and that was the TIG-225 and that was a dual voltage uh, stick and TIG machine with high frequency start. Now this is just a stick welder but I am going to hook up a scratch start TIG rig to this and just see how it does with scratch start TIG. But one of the big differences here is this is a 120 volt only welder. So this is a 120 volt stick welder, supposedly has 140 amp output. We'll test that, see how close it actually gets to that, see how well it does. But another big difference with this welder is that it is only $100. So I want to take a look at it, see how well it does, because $100 for a 120 volt stick welder uh, could make a, a great little starter machine for somebody or just maybe a little home machine to do small projects around the garage. So let's take a look at what it comes with and then we'll do some welding with it and see how it does. All right, so here's everything that's included with the welder. It does come with a little pack of four welding electrodes. Really kind of just a token gesture because uh, four electrodes isn't gonna do all that much for you. Uh, they are labeled here, and uh, I probably can't see that through the plastic, but they are labeled J422. So um, I'd have to look online to see you know, what that is similar to uh, in terms of electrodes that I'm familiar with, but. Uh, it does come with a little bag with four electrodes in it. Comes with a manual, a very basic manual, mostly safety guidelines, and then a specification sheet, and then just kind of points to the different things on the welder, tells what they are. Really not a whole lot to it. Nothing, uh, nothing above and beyond there as far as the manual is concerned. One nice thing to see is that it does come with nearly 10 foot cables for the work clamp and the electrode holder. Now they, the spec does say that it comes with 10 foot cables. They're not quite 10 feet. They're um, it may be closer to nine foot four inches, nine foot six inches, something like that. But still, uh, you know, it's better than the you know five or six foot cables that some of them come with. So that's pretty nice. Also, the ground clamp is uh, fairly decent, honestly, for this kind of welder. Uh, the more welders I look at, the more I find that most welders don't come with a very nice work clamp. Uh, and as far as uh, you know, cheap work clamps go, this one's not bad. It's got a really stiff spring on it, opens up decently wide. It's got copper jaws and a little braided copper strap to go between the two, so really not too bad at all. Still just a stamped steel clamp. Um, you know, the jaws don't line up quite perfect, but really not too bad at all. The cables overall seem seem fine. Uh, the insulation does have that, that same kind of chemical smell that the, uh, the other Amico welder had to it, so I kind of suspect that these would melt fairly easily as well. Also, I might <laughs> I might have to just cut the insulation off to see what the heck is going on there. So I might uh, strip that back a little bit just to see what is up with that massive lump, just for curiosity's sake. But anyway, decent length cables, probably work just fine. The electrode holder, um, you know, definitely cheap, but uh, seems to work okay. Once again, fairly stiff spring. I can't say for sure until I use it for a while, but it looks like they at least have these little uh, ears coming down off of this top insulator to keep to kind of capture that pin and keep it from walking out so that um, not that it was a huge issue with the other Amico welder but that pin did kind of walk out and let this jaw come apart so it looks like on this one a little less likely to happen because it looks like that pin is kind of captured in here by this insulator so hopefully it holds up okay on the ends of the cables just a standard uh, 25 DINs connector to made up with the front of the welder front of the welder, nothing too exciting or surprising, but uh, take a quick look. Uh, DINS connectors for the electrode holders and work clamp. Uh, little LCD display here to show what the welding amperage setting is. And then just a knob to adjust the output. Uh, the knob itself feels uh, pretty stiff, pretty sturdy, moves pretty smooth, so no issues there. Back of the welder, also nothing too surprising or exciting, but you just have the power cord, uh, power switch, and the cooling fan. Now the power cord is actually pretty decent. It's a 14 gauge, which should be fine for a welder like this. Um, it is also 105 C rated. So uh, the insulation on the power co cord uh, should be pretty good. And it's also six and a half feet long. So not super long, but uh, it comes out of the back of the welder and it's six and a half feet long. Some of the cheaper welders that I've looked at, I mean, they have like four to five foot cords. Some of them even come out of the front. So no problem there. And then just overall, the welder is very light and compact. Um, you know, you can see 
very small little welder. Uh, fit and finish is decent. Uh, I haven't opened it up to take a look inside yet or anything, but uh, just as far as on the outside, the paint, fit, finish, feel of it, uh, seems fine. And uh, for a $100 welder, uh, pretty darn good. So there's that stuff out of the way. Now let's get to the most important stuff. Let's do some welding with it and see how it does. Okay, so I haven't started welding yet, but I decided to go ahead and cut open that lumpy spot in the insulation on the work clamp cable. And what I found inside is pretty crazy, and uh, I just wanted to show it. So this is the inside of the work clamp cable. I mean, all this fraying and this nastiness, that's not from me. Um, I just very carefully sliced down this cable and then peeled it back. And, you know, that's what we're left with inside. We're just left with all this, just this frayed, shredded, just, just mess of strands. I mean, all of it is like that. Just all frayed up. And then actually where that lump was is right here. And this, I didn't do this. This was all twisted back together. It's like, um, you know, they had a long section that a bunch of the strands were broken or something and they just they just twisted it all together and then you know insulated over top of it and so where this, these two spots were kind of clumped together was where that little lump was I haven't actually tried untwisting this yet but right here you can see that it actually seems to be quite a few less strands than the rest of it and if I kind of untwist this yeah this is all just just broken, frayed, <laughs> and just destroyed wiring that they just twisted back together. Like, I seriously kind of wonder if this isn't recycled wiring with melted down recycled plastic put back over top of it. And that's probably why it's got that uh, that chemical smell to it. Well, might I say probably, I really don't know, but it could be. But either way, that's actually what the inside of the <laughs> work lamp cable is. It's just a bunch of just shredded up, uh, different wires just kind of just pieced together and then uh, coated in some kind of insulation. So there you go. Probably works okay, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, definitely some kind of uh, recycled, hacked together kind of cables. Yeah, wow. Just. Uh, just crazy. <laughs> Never seen that before. Anyway, just wanted to show that before I uh, move on and start welding with this. Okay, so how's that for an ominous cut? <laughs> uh, I cut away saying let's test the welder out and when I come back I'm not in the garage anymore and I've got a screwdriver handy. So testing didn't really go that well. Um, uh, on the box of the, for this welder it did say that it had um, like an as-needed fan. I figured that was their their way of saying that it had a fan on demand feature where the fan would only run when needed and so I wasn't really all that surprised when I powered the welder up and the fan didn't spin. I figured okay when I start welding the fan will spin. Well it wasn't until I burned a couple of rods that I noticed the fan still isn't actually spinning and I could actually feel heat uh, building up on the sides of the welder. So I know there was some heat in there and the fan still wasn't spinning. Uh, I just want to take it take it open real quick and just see if Maybe the fan is just disconnected or if it's just a, you know, a wiring issue or something I can correct because it, I think if I could get the fan working, I would at least be able to do a little bit more welding with it and, um, you know, get a better feel for it. But uh, let's get the case pulled open and see if there's, you know, any, any obvious reason why the fan's not working. And there we go. That's a pretty obvious problem and hopefully should be a pretty easy fix. I'll zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. So this is actually the wire that goes to the fan. And I'm assuming that right there is the connector it's supposed to be plugged into. <laughs> so uh, just unplugged and the way it's taped here, there's actually um, some attention on it. So I'm sure just in shipping that came popped off of there. So I'll get that plugged back in. And hopefully we should have a working fan and uh, should be able to do a little bit more testing with this. All right, fan plugged back in. Uh, so I'll put the case back together and uh, hopefully it should at least be working now. 
All right, so I'm done with the testing, and uh, I think this review is going to have to be a little bit of a mini review. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to have uh, arc shots and all that as most of the reviews have. It's not because I didn't do it with this welder, but I just didn't record much of it. And that's because uh, this welder did have a bit of a problem that, in the grand scheme of things, isn't a huge deal, but it did throw me for a bit of a loop during my testing. Uh, such a simple thing. I wish I would have figured it out sooner, but... I didn't, unfortunately, and uh, the way I usually do these reviews, I just kind of fit them in when I have time. Uh, so after work, if, if I have a little bit of time at the end of the day, um, I'll do some welding, uh, record a video, something like that. And that doesn't happen every day or, um, you know, even once a week all the time. And I've actually spent three evenings with this machine trying to get it to run right because it just seemed like it was almost there, but something was holding it back and I couldn't quite place it. And it wasn't until, like I said, I had spent three days and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to have to call it because I'm spending a lot of time on this. And I'll just set up and do a little bit of quick TIG work with it. Uh, you know, just set up for scratch start TIG, do a little bit of that, and then uh, film the last part of the review. Well, the instant I struck an arc with TIG, I realized the issue. <laughs> so what it actually is, these are actually labeled backwards. So this says negative, this says positive. It is the opposite. This is negative. This is positive. So for all the stick welding I was trying to do, I was welding with electrode negative, and that's why I could strike an arc, I could run a bead, but the arc wasn't very smooth, uh, I wasn't getting very much penetration, and um, the rod just wanted to stick more than normal with certain rods, and it wanted to go out more than normal with other rods. It just, it just really wasn't running right. You know, I was trying different rods, um, all different types of rods, um, trying new ones, trying some of my old ones. I was even trying other welders just to make sure it wasn't my power coming in or, um, you know, something I was doing. I'd fire up a different welder. It would run perfect. I'd go back to this one and I just couldn't figure out what was going on. These are backwards. <laughs> so I swapped that around and then it actually ran great. But by that time, uh, it was late in the day. I'd already done like three days of, of welding with this machine and didn't really film any of it because I was trying to get uh, get the issue sorted out. Oh, and also, uh, now that the fan is plugged in, that does run just fine. It is not a fan on demand. It runs all the time. Turn it on, the fan runs. No big deal. Um, you know, I, I really wouldn't expect a welder that only costs $100 to have that feature, uh, but it mentioned it on the box, which is why I wasn't um, immediately concerned when the fan didn't run when I turned it on. But anyways, now that the fan's plugged in, works fine. So anyways, um, after all of that, I didn't get a whole lot of actual footage of using the machine, but I have used the machine quite a bit. And uh, once I figured that out and swapped the leads, um, it does run pretty darn good. So, as for the review and the thoughts on the machine. Uh, in that testing, I did test the amperage output of the machine. Um, and I found that, uh, as is pretty darn common with these machines, uh, the display on the gauge isn't 100% accurate with what you're getting out of it. Now, that's pretty common with other machines. Uh, one thing I did find with this one that is not all that common is that um, it's not always in the same direction. Like, so with most machines, you know, if you set it to 10, you know, maybe you're getting 20. And when you set it to 40, you're getting 50 and, and you know, so on. And it, you're always getting a little bit more than what it says. Or maybe you're always getting a little less than what it says. With this one, I found that when you're set to low amperages, um, you know, say, say 40 to 50 or so, you're probably getting 5 to 10 amps more than what it says but when you're set to say um, 100 or 115 120 somewhere in that range you might be getting as much as 10 to 20 amps less than what it says but really all that means is that it might take a little bit of tweaking um, to figure out uh, you know at what setting the the rod that you're using is going to run the best so you know it may take a little bit of uh, tweaking a little bit of trial and error to get it tuned in just right to where you know it runs the way you want it to but it does put out um, basically what it says it will, and the open circuit voltage is actually pretty decent for a little 120 machine. Uh, it's about 71 to 72 volts uh, open circuit voltage, so not too bad at all. Now, I don't have any 6010 rods. It's just not a rod that I ever have, you know, real need to use, so I don't run it. So I don't have any around to try, uh, but everything else I tried ran fine. Um, 6011, 7018, 6013, 7014, they all ran just fine. The cables that it comes with, you know, obviously, as we saw, they're not the greatest quality. It's mostly just the, you know, the cheap insulation and the fact that 
those bundles of wires inside are frayed and retwisted together and all that kind of stuff. But they do work. Um, I use them for a lot of my testing. I did actually try switching to other cables during my testing because, you know, I was just wanted to eliminate that as one possibility for why I was having, uh, you know, just such a such a strange arc that I couldn't place why it was so off. So I did try uh, different cables with it, and it was the same. I mean, the cables that it came with uh, were good enough for what it is. I didn't do a lot of super long runs at higher amperage output, uh, but for all the welding that I did, I never noticed them heating up or anything. So uh, the only thing I would say is just be careful uh, not to set hot pieces on them or set them up against a hot part because uh, the insulation on, the, on those cables will melt. But overall, for $100, I'm pleased. Um, it's very small, very light, um, just you know, compact, convenient little machine, runs on 120 volts, uh, you know, runs pretty darn well. Um, I didn't run a whole lot of one eighth inch rod just because, like I said, I was, uh, you know, trying so long to uh, get the machine figured out for what was going on. But I think it probably would be capable of it. Uh, but I think it would probably run, um, you know, most uh, one eighth inch rods just fine. I did run some one eighth seventy fourteen and it ran just fine. So I would think, um, you know, one eighth seventy eighteen would probably run okay and and stuff like that. But didn't run a whole lot of one eighth, but uh, most of what I ran was three thirty second rod and more than enough power for uh, any of the three thirty second rods that I ran. So not a lot of action footage with this machine, but I do have uh, plans for another video with it, and uh, I think it should be pretty interesting. It's actually one of the big reasons I got this machine is because of another video idea I have for it that should be pretty interesting, and uh, I'm really glad that I got it uh, got that issue with it sorted out. Just such a simple thing, and I, it just didn't even occur to me that they might be wrong. It, it did even occur to me that I had them backwards, and I, I double and triple checked that I had the leads uh, connected to the right sides because it almost did seem like it was wrong, but it just didn't even occur to me that it's just labeled backwards. So if you do have one of these, and uh, you know you have trouble starting an arc, or the arc seems real harsh, or um, you have trouble keeping an arc going, or just in general you have a rod that it just doesn't run as well as you think it should, try swapping these <laughs> because this one's backwards. But like I said, once I got those switched, runs pretty darn well. And I think it could be, um, you know, a good option for, um, you know, a, a beginner machine or just a basic home machine to get some small projects done, um, you know, for a hundred bucks. Definitely uh, uh, worth consideration. So like I said, I do have more plans for future videos with this welder. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some more uh, footage actually welding with the machine later. Uh, so you'll get, uh, you know, a little bit better. Sorry there wasn't more of that in this video. But if you have any questions or if you have anything you want me to try out with this little welder, uh, just let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.